Thank you, Marco. Good afternoon. I hope that you can see my slides. Yes, yeah. indeed. Perfect. So I, I will uh, present you uh, um, uh, an approach derived from the field of uh, artificial intelligence, in particular in the field of noise representation, very much related with the, with the problem of policy making. And uh, uh, we'll try to, to discuss with you um, why it could be interesting and relevant uh, for, uh, for decision making and for policy making in particular. As you know, um, policy, policy is, a, is, a, is an imperfect decision making process, as mainly all decision processes. Uh, and this is very much based on, on the capacity of uh, contextualizing information and uh, considering uh, um, different uh, information to support what is a clearly um, a bounded uh, rationality, you know? And, and evidence-based policy making, which, uh, uh, which is becoming more and more relevant uh, um, um, in our society, uh, especially in that moment, uh, is, is, an, is, is a way to, in some way, uh, support this uh, bounded rationality. The problem uh, of evidence-based uh, policy making is the fact that uh, you need to consider several elements. So when we when we when we think about uh, insights and policy recommendation, we are just looking at the tip of the iceberg, no, and just the top. But we have a lot of uh, elements which are not visible but are very much relevant and have a strong influence in the way in which finally we have our insight and possible policy recommendation. And in particular. Um, today, I will focus on, on, the, on the aspect of the data management and the data integration, which is the, as the beginning, no? and when you need to collect data, and you need to make this data available for then developing uh, your analysis and support interpretation. And uh, the issue here is that, uh, uh, as uh, all the policymakers uh, here know, so we have been working too much in a very silos-based approach, so every department in the government, uh, from the municipality to the state, uh, tend to organize the information at the silos level. This happened in several organizations. And then we have a lot of problem when we want to share information, when we want to make this data interoperable. And, and this is a real issue. So how we can create this, uh, um, th this idea of creating a, a semantic web where we can really integrate information in a way that can be easily exploited by everyone and hopefully also open. Um, here is where uh, our ontologies in terms of uh, uh, conceptualization and representation of a specific domain can play a role. And I think that uh, are going to become more and more relevant in the future because we have been discussing a lot about uh, deep, deep learning, data mining, uh, so statistical uh, or um, um, uh, statistical method. And now I'm going to talk a bit more about knowledge-based methods. So the fact that ontology is, is a representation, is a model which is based on a specific uh, knowledge of the, the reality. And the idea here is that what we call the ontology-based data integration approach, or also knowledge graph approach, which is a technology that is growing a lot, which is the idea that we have different data sources that are can distributed everywhere. And then throughout an ontology, we are able to build a layer which allows an integration between the different data sets. And then we can access this information without knowing exactly where these data are, because we just query the ontology and the ontology is connected through our mappings to the different data sources. And this is a bit the, the, the model that we can exploit and is behind what we call the link and open data approach, which is becoming more and more relevant. In particular, if we talk about ontologies, ontologies are uh, increasing uh, avail available. So the availability is increasing a lot in, the, in, the, in this here, and we can have very complex ontologies. Let's think, for example, at the ontology of the gene, how it works, or then we can have a more simple ontology about how student, no? how, is, how we can model the concept of student. And we have more and more of these from different fields and for different aim and we can exploit more and more these available ontologies. And, and I will give you an example of how this can, can, be, can, be, can be used, can be done. So I, I give you an example of, of a project uh, which has been developed by the Tuscany the regional government with the aim of building a regional observatory for research and innovation. 
The idea there was that the region needed to uh, exploit data available in different repository for informing policy on one side, but also for communicating better what Tuscan is doing in terms of research innovation. And, and the idea here is that they were able to collect uh, data coming from different sources. You have data from the regional level, data from the national level, data at the European level, or also data at war level. So for example, in this case, the clinical trial, European project, data about students, data about publication. And then uh, they created uh, an ontology, which is this model of um, the, the, the high educational research system, which has been connected to system for visualizing and uh, uh, interpreting this data. And this ontology, by the way, become the national standard. So now you have uh, uh, an ontology in Italy, which is, the, which is the standard for higher education and research and can be exploited by all, also other organizations because it's available, it's completely a public. And, and, and using this, they also had the problem of uh, integrating uh, different taxonomies because you know that especially when we talk about science, we can have very, very different taxonomies. So we have, uh, for example, everyone is aware about the, what we, we have the classical science-based classification like the ERC, the European Research Council. This is the national disciplinary organization of science in Italy. Or then you have the more classical uh, uh, organization of science using what they call the bibliometric reference, uh, which are based on, on journal where publication uh, appears. But then also you have the smartization classification or the sustainable development goals. So how we can play with all these taxonomy. So in, in the project in Toscana, they created throughout the, the ontology, the possibility of matching and mapping all this information throughout an ontology, which in this case is a model that has been built and, uh, and, and developed with expert. It's not a machine. It's really people that has been developing it. Of course, you have also semi-automatic procedures, but it's really a domain expertise. And has been done also involving the people at the regional level, at the national level for developing this together. So this is also a way of uh, um, reinforcing collaboration while you, you work on building ontologies. And thanks to this, now what you can do, for example, you can explore, for example, what's happening in Tuscany. If you look at Europea, a European project, here you have, uh, for example, disciplinary field, uh, and you see how much project they are getting, but then you can compare with publication, or then you can compare with number of students, and then finally with job employability. All this category came from different data sources using different taxonomy, and we simply are able now to connect and exploit in a much more interoperable way. Sorry, no problem. Yes. And then what we can do, we can also uh, develop uh, uh, much uh, a lot of visualization uh, using this data. If you if you if you explore the the website, I'm not going to do now for 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 time reason, but is everything is online. So you have uh, um, a lot of uh, interactive visualization that you can explore, and all these visualization have been built starting from specific question. For example, in which area the research of or the education regional system is more competitive. And that, or from which, uh, from which uh, area of Italy students are coming to Toscana, in which field they are studying. And then you can navigate all this information and, 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 and you can explore throughout a series of uh, interactive visualization, um, this information. Information that originally are based in different data sets, but now are integrated throughout ontology and then are visualized and you can navigate and then you can explore. Moreover, you can also build internal tools. Of course, these are visualization which are public. You can go, you can explore, you can navigate and are being conceived also for public interest. But then the region also decided to build an internal tool, which is where they really look at indicator, data, information for more strategic purposes. 
and they build an internal dashboard with more than uh, 80 indicators, which exploit all this different data, but without knowing where the data are. They just query the ontology and the ontology is directly going to the different data set, exploiting different information and showing some visualization which can give some information about specific indicators. In this way, what we can we can say, so uh, with the fact that the, the, the semantic technology are really, really useful in helping policymaker because allow the possibility of discovering data throughout the connection between different data. And this can be data and this data can be in different format in different uh, data sources and we can just um, exploit this data using the uh, ontology based technology and the ontologies and for this reason allows us to correlate also different taxonomy and especially very very important for for policymaker include also a posteriori classification because this happened constantly. We, we designed today a, a, a classification, a taxonomy, and then tomorrow new technology appears, new taxonomy arrive, and we need to remap this information. And this is where this approach uh, can be very, very powerful because I love this combination. For example, here in this picture, you can see uh, another example, the correlation between uh, cancer research, where we can correlate in incidence uh, and mortality, and then also the funding and also the publication. So we can really uh, uh, explore this kind of correlation. And then of course, this can also tell us in case we decide to invest money or support science more oriented to certain things. Of course, for doing all these things, uh, it's super necessary that public administration encourage the use of linked open data, which is the model in which we are sharing this, uh, this metadata. So if you take the, uh, this, uh, the, the, what also the European Commission is telling in terms of how we should uh, share data and how the data should be interoperable, link and open data is what they call the five-star model. So it's the best way of sharing data. And, and, and not everyone is still doing this because of course, this require an effort, which is not just publishing a PDF or a CSV file, but of course, if we want to be able to exploit this information in a much more um, um, smart way and, uh, and exploit the semantic behind the data, we need to do this effort in publishing the data in this, in this format. And this is why a lot of public administration are working more and more in, in building these ontologies as a possible standard solution. And we just need to use it because uh, is, we are now plenty of these simply Sometimes we don't know and we don't use, we don't exploit this information and we reinvent another one. One maybe this ontology is already there, it's already a standard and we just need to map our data with, with respect to this, uh, to, this, to this model. And uh, I will just stop here because maybe if you have questions, it's more interesting to, to, to be able to, to exchange also with, with, with you.